Hello, my friends, and welcome to Vlog 364. I'm Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. It is Thursday, December 14th, and uh, I've got a good little uh, lineup of videos for you. i got like four little short video clips that I think you'll enjoy. And I'm going to start off with something just whether I can do it or not. <laughs> <laughs> the or not is the problem here. I can't even hold the pick this morning. My hands are so stiff. That last part was supposed to be thumpity, thump, thump, thumpity, thump, thump. Well, I didn't play that like I figured I would play it, but that's the way everything is when I play it. It's just like uh, ad lib. Uh, it just happens. Whatever happens, happens. <laughs> it's not planned out. It's not, you know, it's not memorized, all the notes. I just, I, I literally play what comes to me at that second. And sometimes what comes to me is good, and sometimes what comes to me is not so good. Uh but it just kind of is what it is. <laughs> I tell you, early in the morning, it's hard to play, period, with, with these crazy hands anymore. Let's see here. Let's get into what we got. Uh, I first thought I'd start off with uh, telling you about Cash. He uh, came yesterday, and he wants to be part of our Christmas show next uh, Thursday evening. If you haven't put it on your calendar, be sure to do that. We'll have our Christmas show next Thursday evening, a week from tonight. Um, at, at 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, it'll be the usual usual players. In fact, I think everybody that was here last uh, month will be here this time, uh, with the possible exception of Yolanda. I'm not really sure about Yolanda yet at this point. Um, but we will also add Cash. He's going to be involved, and he'll probably play a tune or two during our uh, halftime break. Uh, he's got three of them worked up, and he and he learned them on him on his own, and uh, that's what I I gave him as the charge was to learn three Christmas songs on his own, and really that's the first time he's done that, or at least to my knowledge, and he did pretty darn good, really. Uh, there was a little problem here and there, but not too bad, you know. And I helped him straighten it out, and I think he's going to be able to pull it off, and uh, I think that's what's cool is that he's doing it on his own. Um, that was my goal, was to make him, uh, you know, get him back in time and get him self-sufficient. And uh, we look like we're getting pretty close to that goal now. Uh, this wasn't on the list, but here you go. Look at this. Rat bait. That's rat bait. And it's empty. <laughs> I didn't know the lid was going to fall off, but it's empty. Anyway, uh, I ordered some new stuff uh, made by Bell Labs. It's a second generation rat bait or something. And uh, according to all the reviews, it's more expensive, but it works much better. And right now we're having so many problems with the rats that for sure I need the strongest stuff they got. Uh, it's, it's pathetic. I'm telling you, man, it's, you wouldn't believe. They're eating the rat bait like candy right now. Um, we put it out three times in the last week, and it's all gone. It's just nuts. And they just chew up everything. I mean, it's, it's crazy destructive. And there's no other good option. You can talk big talk all you want. To some, those of you who feel sorry for the rats, just feel free. But if you, you know, were involved in a place where the rats were you know, literally tearing up everything and causing thousands and thousands of dollars worth of damage, you'd kill them too. And... I, every bit of it, I guarantee you 100% you'd kill them too. Here's a little short video on the firewood situation at the moment. Well, there's what she looks like filled up. It's Thursday morning and you can see the pile is dwindling. That pile used to come out to about in here somewhere. So just since Tuesday, I've used that much. It's still a fairly good sized pile. 
but to think it was going to last two weeks is quite optimistic at these temperatures as it's in the low 20s this morning but that's just the name of the game so with seeing how much i used just since tuesday and i know you can't really tell real well um but you can see how I can burn a cord of wood in three days. Uh, you know, when, it, when it's really cold. Uh, right now, I'm only putting wood in twice a day. Uh, and it's, it's completely burning up each time. You know, like when I go there, it's empty. Um, and I'm putting it in just twice a day. When it's really cold, like another five or so degrees colder than it is right now, uh, then I'm putting it in three times a day. And it's empty each day time and that's where I burn a quart of wood in three days you can see there I've burned a big chunk of a cord I would say that 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 big pile I had there was about a cord and a half to be conservative I'm pretty sure that I could have made a cord and a half out of that for sure and uh, you can see how much is already gone it's and this is just you know th really it was just a um you know, uh, Tuesday and uh, Wednesday, and then now just this morning is, so really it's only like a day and a half. This was the second time I've, I mean, actually the fourth fill up I've had out of that pile of wood there. So this morning. So it won't take long for that to be gone, unfortunately. I wish it would last longer, but it just doesn't. Here's another little short video clip of what I did uh, yesterday. I told you I had to go pick up some pipes. So here, take a look at this. Thought I'd show you this pipe I picked up. It's 20 feet long, so you can see it's, you know, it's not easy to haul. I did hook up the big rig and hauled it. Now these culvert pipe, I had already hauled them uh, several months ago, actually, in preparation of repairing this culvert here. This culvert is in bad shape all the way through and uh, it wasn't done very well when it was done the first time and you can see how it's filled up with dirt and everything. It's just a mess. So, and it comes out up there. So I'm going to reroute that whole line and do it correctly. And those white pipes are for my fiber optic cable to run it from approximately right here through the ditch all the way up to the house. Can I get all that done and hopefully get it done before the Christmas show? That's when I would like to have our Christmas show up in the man cave. I don't know if that'll happen or not. We'll see. Yeah, I don't have nothing to do. I don't know why I can't get it done. Anyway, I got the pipe picked up. That was a that was just a big charge in itself, believe it or not. Uh, you know, it's you know, you have to haul. It, I really had to hook up the whole great big rig, you know, and it's a 26 foot long trailer and all that. I mean, I probably could have got it done another way, but I it would have been sketchy, so I just decided not to be sketchy about it. Anyway, got that done. Um, here's another little short video clip that tells you the woes of my grapple bucket. <laughs> Thought I'd show you the problem with the grapple bucket. You can see that it's been busted right there and it's out all completely deformed. It's a lightweight bucket to begin with and it was already wore out when I made the uh, grapple bucket. It lasted quite a few years, but it's beyond repair at this point in my opinion or not worth repairing. So I'll take the whole mechanism off the top and I'll add it to a bigger bucket like this. We have a spare bucket or two so that's what we'll do and in case you couldn't really tell what you were looking at there the little grapple bucket was sitting inside of a bigger bucket there on the bobcat the bigger bucket is in fine shape the little grapple bucket was the one that was all bent up and beat up and uh I, we do have another couple of uh bucket choices that are about the same size as the big bucket that it was sitting in and i'll put the grapple on the one of those bigger buckets and it'll should last a very, very long time in that configuration. But it just takes the work to get it done, to get it, to put it together. And here's the uh, final little video clip on the fuel situation that uh, we've been talking about on the Bobcat. This just gives you a picture uh, so you can kind of visualize what's going on here. Regarding the Bobcat fuel problem, here's where the fuel enters right here. 
And if you look at the back, back here, here's the engine area. You can see how jam full everything is. There's no uh, sign of the fuel here, though the fuel comes in right here. And if you blow through this line, it goes back into the tank. Now we'll come around to the front. I've already opened the Bobcat and you can see that there's no fuel tank to be seen in here either. But there's the fuel neck right there coming in, but it still leads to almost nowhere like the abyss. So like I said, if it was a simple problem, I'd already have it fixed. Yep, that's the name of that tune. <laughs> it's just, you know, I, I'm sure I can get down in there and find where it actually goes into the tank. I just haven't done it yet. It's greasy, it's nasty, it's down in the dark there, and I can't see in the dark as you already know, so I gotta get it lit up and where I can get in there and see what I'm doing. It just ain't simple. But even if I do, and even if I can see the top of the tank, I don't think it's going to be anything easy to clean out. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. I just don't know. Let's go to the comments and see where we're at with that this morning. Uh, Rod Wintler was the first one from Berkeley, California. There's Bill Webb, my buddy. I'm up early this, uh, with the grandbaby patiently waiting. Uh, okay, well, there you go. Those grandbabies will do that to you. <laughs> and uh, this thing's acting stupid right now. It's not letting me scroll one way or the other. Maybe that's because it's just a full screen. and That's probably what it is. I don't know. Anyway, it was an exactly full screen, which you don't see that very often. It wouldn't let me move it one way or the other. Um, Marigold Time is there from... Uh, from Sweden and, and she's got a question there what's in what's the line in if we make it through December why daddy can't afford no Christmas here or cheer gear yeah um, I have to re-listen to it uh, I know some people say here and I think it's I why daddy can't afford no Christmas cheer is what I think it is, but you're, it's a good question, and I was going to look it up myself uh, because I have the same problem with that. Um, I can't remember anymore whether it was here or cheer, and I think it's cheer, but I'm not sure of that. More than likely, because I think it's cheer, it's here. You know, <laughs> that's usually the way that goes. But uh, anyway, I, you, that's a good question, and I don't know the answer at the moment. I got to look it up. And I'm, so I'm sure somebody will Google it while we're doing this and put it in the uh, comment section. Although you still have to be careful because when you see those words out there, those lyrics out there, they're often transcribed wrong. I guarantee you that. So you can't know 100% if you just go out and look at the transcribed lyrics that are out there on like lyrics.com or, or, you know, the country western lyrics, you know, and stuff like that. I'm not kidding you. You'll find wrong lyrics all the time so don't ever hang your hat on that what you really have to do is find Merle singing the song and listen to what he says that's how I do it because the the lyric you can't go by the lyrics that are out there so there you go that's my three cents on that uh, there's Chuck again from st. James there's Bruce Hines good morning from sunny cold South Carolina Having a great day. Yep, so far we're having a good day. I'm, I'm going to have to get out there on the Bobcat today, though. Today's the day i got to do a deep dive in there and figure something out and see what's really wrong. Like I said, right at the moment, I don't even think the fuel's a real issue. I mean, yeah, it's an issue because it just keeps happening. But I'm not too worried about the fuel problem. The problem I'm worried about is why it keeps dying and, I, and getting those air messages. I'm pretty sure that's got something to do with hydraulics. And that could be very expensive, and I sure hope it, it doesn't turn out that way. Brian Byler, uh, good morning. And um, Kathy Voles. And uh, let's go to after we went live. Ronald Lewis was the first one to check in. Christia Thomason. And uh, Donald Matthews. How is the solar panel working on the battery charger? Well, I was going to cover that this morning. Glad you asked. <laughs> I forgot to put that in my notes here. Um, you know, it was only 20, about three or four degrees this morning, which is pretty dang chilly. 
and I went out and started it right up, and it didn't seem to bog down or nothing. It, it, you know, I shouldn't say it out loud, but it seems to be a good stopgap measure. It didn't fix the exact problem, obviously, but it's a workaround, you know, and it seems to be working pretty good. I have not had to do anything more to it since I added the charger. I'm reasonably happy with it so far. I just hope it holds out. Thanks for the question, because uh, I was going to cover that, and I just forgot. James Cop, how about dueling jingle bells? <laughs> Everything I do is a dueling tune, because <laughs> I'm fighting with myself to play it, pretty much. That's the truth. Christia Thomason, thanks for the jolly tune. <laughs> Playing early, early in the morning is always tough. Well, let me tell you, it's t the older you get, the tougher it gets, too. Um, I used to say, you know, as a joke, too, like we'd play early morning shows like at 9 or 10 o'clock, or sometimes we'd play on a TV show at 9 in the morning or something like that. And, and I'd always joke and say, you know, most musicians don't even get out of bed till noon. <laughs> so you know, here we are trying to play it. <laughs> and that's the truth. Most musicians don't. You know, they play late at night and they sleep till late in the day, you know. Um, anyway... There's James Akers from Indiana. Frost on the pumpkin for sure. It's definitely frosty here. I would say the pumpkin would be froze and busted open here right now. <laughs> I'm pretty sure of that. Backstory Family History says, Since you live in a rural area away from the ambient light from towns, I was wondering, do you have a telescope and take advantage of the great views you know i I really like that and i and I'm interested in it and i've played around with it just a little bit we had a cheapy telescope you know that kind of thing um I haven't sprung for the big good telescope but man you there are certain nights out here where the sky is lit up I mean it's really beautiful I mean it's really beautiful so it would be the perfect place to do it if you were going to do it that's for sure um you know it's always cold out here at night <laughs> whenever you can really see the stars good so that you know that's the other thing i probably waited too long should have done it when i was younger but uh yeah it's it would be a good place to do it you are 100 percent correct when uh it was probably about a year ago maybe I'm, I'm not sure when those four planets aligned or whatever it was where it was jupiter really close and and uh saturn and I don't know, maybe Venus or something. But anyway, there was, you know, uh, you could for sure see Jupiter and Saturn. And so we went up on top of the one of our high hills here, not too far from where I put that tower up. And we just took binoculars. And you could see the rings of Saturn with just binoculars, which I thought was really cool because I'd never seen that before. And uh, yeah, that was really cool. Didn't even know you could do that, really, honestly. Uh, not with just a pair of binoculars. It was pretty cool. So it would be a good place to do it. That's for sure. <clears throat> and if anybody wants to uh, come and stay at the rental retreat and bring your telescope, I'd be happy to look through it. <laughs> Spike Moto, how often do you have to clean the ashes out of that furnace? And what do you do, uh, do with the ashes? Well, I use the ashes as fertilizer pretty much. And uh, the uh, we clean them out eh, roughly once a month is kind of... And, I, and I'm not exaggerating. I take the big bucket on the Bobcat and it pretty much fills it up level. I mean, not 100% sometimes, but most of the time it's pretty close to level. And I mean, that's, that bucket will hold a lot. So it's, you know, I, I always think of it kind of humorously that most people clean out their ashes in a small bucket like this. <laughs> I clean mine out with a bobcat bucket and it's generally full. And I spread, I spread them on the garden. I'm thinking I might start spreading them on my food plots um, because the soils here are so acidic that the ashes uh, tone that down, the acid in, uh, the, the, it tones the acid in the ground down. Uh, let's see. Um, <laughs> Christy is aggravated that she's having to work while she's watching here. Uh, Clyde Price, good morning, uh, Jerry. It's a good thing you're not 
Santa because with all the things you have on the go. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah, I'd have a tough time making all the rounds in, in addition. Uh, Bill Mumbo says, not mistakes. <laughs> I guess you're talking about my tune. Yeah, jazz. He says it's jazz. It's not mistakes. Yeah, those were just some jazz notes I throw in there as extra. They didn't cost you any more. <laughs> I, and that is the truth, though. I mean, I think a lot of guys, I think, I, I could be wrong, but I think they memorize how they play a tune and they get it. I, I mean, to, to some degree, everybody does that, I think. And I do it a little bit, too. But honestly, I pretty much ad lib it for the most part uh, pretty much every time. <laughs> um. There are a few tunes where I've got a, a particular break I try to play every time. Uh, the Spoken Song. You used to keep us updated on your subscriber count as you approached your one, uh, one million. Well, I, never, I didn't get to a million. It was 100,000. Uh, is the count still rising steadily? Yes, it's still rising. I forget where I'm at now. I'm at 100, 000, I think I'm at 102,000, something like that. So I got about another 2,000. It's real close to that. Uh, might be a little more than that now. I'm not really sure. I haven't checked it in a day, in a day or two. Yeah, after I hit the big milestone, it was a little anticlimactic after that. But yeah, it's still growing. It's just not growing real, real fast. This, um, let's see. Jan Peters, does the furnace regulate according to temperature air supply or do you regulate heat by feeding less wood? No, it has a, a thermostat. Let me give you an overview again of how it works. It's, it's actually incredibly simple. It's just crazy simple how it works. Um, I could build one from scratch, no problem at all. Uh, and, and knowing what I know now, I probably wouldn't have bought that one. I probably would have built it from scratch. Um, okay, all it is, it's, it's just your typical wood stove, if you will, but it's bigger. And then above it, there's a tank of uh, a jacket, a water jacket of, you know, filled with about 400 gallons of water. So this is a big one. Uh, you know, a lot of them are smaller than that, but this one holds like 400 gallons of water, or real close to that, uh, slightly under it, I think. But anyway, uh, so all the, the uh, and then there's a... Um, uh, a, a solenoid on the little damper door that you would ordinarily open to let more air in. Well, there's a solenoid on it. And, and whenever the heat dies down, the solenoid opens the door and lets air in, and then the heat comes up again, and it brings the temperature of the water up to 185 degrees. Then the solenoid kicks off, and the door shuts when the water gets up to 185 degrees. That's all separate, completely separate from the house. The house knows nothing about that, and this thing out here, the, the furnace, knows nothing about what's going on in the house. The two things are totally separate. So the, the, the furnace is completely self-sufficient it does its own thing it just keeps the water at 180 degrees and it's just it opens and closes that door that's all there is to it nothing more to it than that now there in addition to that when i say they don't know about each other they don't but the on the side of the furnace there's a uh, water circulation pump that runs continuously and never stops does, there, it has nothing to do with a thermostat or anything. It just never stops. And it circulates water through the long pipe that goes in the house, goes through the A coil of the furnace, and returns back to the furnace. You know, and, and it goes back into the tank. And it continually circulates that. No, nonstop, 24-7, never stops. Just continually circulates it. Then... So, and again, the, the furnace doesn't realize that's happening. And the, the, I mean, the inside furnace doesn't realize it's happening and the outside furnace, you know, just keeps it spinning. That's all it is. Then on the inside of the house, your regular wall thermostat that you have on any furnace, when it calls for heat, all, the, all it does in this case is it just turns the furnace blower on. That's all it does. It turns the, the inside furnace blower on and because the water is circulating through that a coil continuously the a coil is always hot so when the furnace blower comes on it starts blowing hot air through the house 
It's just that simple. And nothing more to it than that. Like I said, uh, there's really the furnace inside the house knows nothing about the furnace outside and, and vice versa. The, the two are totally independent. It's just that the water circulates between them is the only difference. And the regular thermostat on your wall in your house is what kicks the blower on on the inside house furnace. That's all it kicks on. It doesn't kick on the, the heating element. It just kicks on the blower. And the blower blows through the hot water. That's it's really all it is. It's, it's so super simple. It's uh, it, nothing to it at all, really. The only complicated part was putting the A-coil inside the, on the uh, furnace on the inside of the house. That was the only complicated part of it. Um, you know, really, everything else is just simple, really. Very, very simple, at least it, from my perspective. Um, okay, moving on. Um, Backstory Family says, I'm a family history and general history researcher. I think I found an explanation for why you're finding only Union civil relics and how that could still be evidence of a skirmish. We'll email. email, email. Well, that's what I'm behind on right now is the email. I haven't looked at that in weeks, honestly. I, I really haven't. I'm sorry if you've sent me something that I just haven't looked at, but I, I apologize. But I'll try to get in there and get, get caught up on that, too. I ain't got nothing else to do. Um, Mason Hamlin, good morning from Houston, Texas. And there's Michael 2X, Rosemeister, and he's from Evans, Georgia. And Mike Bennett from Winter Park. And there's Christia Thompson again. Uh... Just listen to the Merle Haggard song. I believe he sang No Christmas Here. Okay. And you know what? I honestly, I, I, you might be, I mean, you're probably right. But I think he's got different versions of it. And I think he says cheer every once in a while too. I mean, I really do. I honestly think that he sang it two different ways at different times. But I could be wrong on that. I, I just think I remember that though. So I don't know. I it doesn't really matter. You know, one word is either one of those words works just fine in the song. Um, of course, I'd prefer to do it the way he wrote it, but I'm not sure he knows which way he wrote it. I think he did it both ways. I really do. Um, and Michael Two X says, "Does the Rosermeiser recommend the blue chip picks? And if so, which size?" Well, I love the blue chip picks. I've got them on my two mandolins that I keep in cases up at the house. Uh, I don't have it on this mandolin here in the shop. But uh, the blue chip picks are killer. I love them. Now, these are the larger triangular picks that I have now. And both of those were sent to me by viewers. Until I received those, I had never used one of those large triangular picks. Now, I had tried them out, but I never really ever seriously used them. Um, I just didn't really like the large picks. But after they sent them to me, and they were the blue chip picks, and after I got used to using them, it's my preference. Now, I really do like the large triangular uh, blue chip pick. Um, I want to say the number 50 is on there, I think. I don't know why I think that, but I think there's a number 50 on there, if that makes a difference. Uh, but anyway, I, you know, up until receiving those as gifts, I would never, and I mean seriously, I would never have spent that much money on a pick. Not ever. You couldn't have, you probably couldn't have held a gun to my head and made me do it. But now that I've gotten used to using them and I love those picks, I'll buy one in a heartbeat. I, I, I'm just telling you for sure. I would, the, if I lose those picks by somehow, I would definitely go buy another one. So, I mean, I like them that much. They're that good. Uh, they're, they're, they changed my world on picks. They, I wear picks out so fast. Uh, it's crazy. This one's fairly new, uh, and it's not too badly worn. But if I played like this pick um, on a serious couple of jam sessions that end would be rounded off. The blue chip picks don't wear at all. I mean, they don't even show anywhere, at least the ones I've got. I, I've, they don't show anywhere at all, and I've played them hard 
<laughs> for hours and hours and hours. And they show zero wear. It's amazing. I don't see how they could do that. But they do. And they work great. And they sound great. There you go. There's my blue chip pick, uh, you know, advertisement. And I get nothing out of it. So somebody should tell them to watch this video. And they should send me free picks. <laughs> Eric Sandal. Uh, you could include a window in the roof, I guess, of the water wheel to glaze at the stars. That's an idea, I guess. Yeah, except that it's not really in the open very good. There's some trees and things there, and, and it's up against a hillside. It, it, you don't realize that from the pictures you've seen, but it's not a very good place. If you're going to make a, a, a observatory out here, you'd either go up on top of one of our hills or you do it out here in the middle of this field, one of those two. And even out in the middle of the field, the hills rise so fast that you wouldn't be able to see the skyline as, as, as clear. You know, it'd be better to be up on one of our hills, like in my tower. Now, if I put a roof, if I put an observatory in my tower, man, you'd have something up there because it's way up high. That'd be cool. Anyway, it's a good idea. It's just not the place to do it, unfortunately. Uh, Marigold Times. Yeah, let's see. Oh, she's listened over and over, uh, Marigold says, and she's still not sure. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure, but I, I really do think. I mean, I really do. I'm not just saying this. I really do think I've heard him say it two different ways. I really do. Um. Jason Wallen, has anyone noticed that the ads are longer since he hit 100,000 subscribers? Does this hurt your money if I skip them early? Um, you know, I, <clears throat> I, I would say it probably does at a certain point. I, I don't know the real super, I don't know all the rules on that. I know if their ads are watched, I get, I do better, but I, I don't really know what the rules are. And my suggestion is if you, if you can watch them, watch them. If you can't, don't worry about it. You know, just don't worry about it. I, I'm not, I'm not going to cry about it one way or the other, you know? And, uh, so just do whatever's comfortable for yourself. If it's time to get up and go get a soda or something, go do that while the ad's playing. <laughs> But yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I, I, can't, I can't blame you for skipping them. I didn't realize they had gotten longer though. I didn't, I didn't know anything about that. Uh, Cuff point one, good morning. The wedding ring song is great. Does anyone know Del McCory? That song sounds very much like his voice. Love your channel. I learned so much from you. Well, thank you very much. Well, you know, maybe I ought to send that to Dell. He that wouldn't be a bad deal. You know, he, I've never met him personally. I'm trying to think if I met anybody in his band. Even seems like I might have met Mike Bubb one time. He was a former bass player, but uh, no, I don't think so. <clears throat> there's Yolanda's music, and there's Yolanda. So uh, she says, "I hope you have a great day." Well, thank you. You too, Yolanda, and. Uh, <clears throat> Anyway, if uh, I'll just say, Yolanda, if you've worked up a Christmas tune or two, just come on and be part of the Christmas show if you want to. No pressure one way or the other. I'm not sure we're going to be able to let you do the karaoke thing, unfortunately, because, uh, you know, she, I thought it was great. I loved how easy it was to do the karaoke thing with Yolanda last month on our live show. But I think, and it, it is, I don't even know for sure, I think that's the reason we couldn't monetize the video was because of the karaoke tunes that were in there because that's the only time YouTube stopped us from monetizing a video. That's the only time out of the thousands of videos I have, that was the only time we couldn't monetize a video and that was the only time we've ever used karaoke. So I'm just assuming that that was the reason at, the, at this point because they don't give you a reason. They just say, you can't monetize it. Too bad, so sad. And that's so stupid. I mean, if they're smart enough to know you can't monetize it, they should just give you a reason. YouTube, you should just hang your head in shame. Just ridiculous to do something like that to, a, to one of your users. You know, it's ridiculous. Absolutely, stupidly ridiculous. 
ridiculous. And I hope they see this and th that they hang their head in shame. <clears throat> yeah, Christia Thomason, she says, it's just not clear. Okay, on the song, we're talking about that word. Oh, my gosh, I didn't know that either, Marigold. She says, the ads always start right when the live starts, so I always miss the beginning. Well, isn't that crazy? I didn't know that. I assume that if the ad popped up during the live, that it would pick up, you know, from where it is. Now, it wouldn't technically be live at that moment anymore, but I would, th I would have thought it would have just picked back up. But apparently, it skips to the next live space or wherever, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how it works, to be truthful, because I'm on this end of it. I don't get to see it. <laughs> but anyway, guys, that looks like we're at the end there. And uh, I appreciate you tuning in this morning. because like 136 viewers at the moment. Um, I guess I'll look up uh, the Merle thing myself and see if I can... Because I, I did want to do that. I, I really did plan to do that, and I had forgotten. So I'm glad you reminded me. And I'm going to listen to it, and I'll remember and maybe i'll do it again tomorrow and tell you which way it is <laughs> y'all have a good day and we will see you tomorrow <laughs>